Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Raka, Kodash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just Bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a lesson uh, going into the book of Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter uh, in the seventh verse. You know, and this lesson was in, was pretty much inspired by a uh, comment that was left uh, on the beloved, um, the beloved elder, Elder Apostle Ram Lab's live stream he did a couple of days ago. I believe it was titled uh, Danger Approacheth. You know, an individual left a comment in reference to Deuteronomy the 23rd chapter in the seventh verse, uh, seeking understanding. You know, and I told I directed him to um, pretty much search up, you know, Deuteronomy 23 and 7 uh, GMS on YouTube and it will come up. You know, the elders uh the lesson that the elder did will come up. And there's many other lessons as well <coughs> from the brothers. But needless to say, I was at work, you know, during the live stream. But the inspiration did come upon me, um, you know, to to get into Deuteronomy 23 and 7 when I was at work. I wanted to get into it yesterday, but the spirit, you know, I came across an article um, uh, going into <laughs> some heavy information in reference to Babylon the Great. And it... Uh, you know, withering away. But needless to say, the spirit hopped on me today, you know, to get into this, the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, for putting the spirit on me to, to want to get into Deuteronomy, you know, the 23rd chapter and the 7th verse. But before we get into it, right, real quick, I just want to make it known that um, both of the channels, let me see here, both of the camp channels, right, have been striked. So, you know, we were out there last weekend, you know, as you can see, November 5th, and it, 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 it's no bueno. They took it down. We were going in on Amalek, the chief house of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. You know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. You know, and these devils, you know, they're not allowing this. They're not allowing it to go up. You know, this is the backup channel. Hey, I meant to put on my um, main channel uh, as a link uh, via the homepage. But uh, haven't been able to do that yet. But needless to say, they've striked this as well. You know, so Lord willing, we're gonna open up uh, uh, either a bit shoot or a um, uh, what's the name of the other one? An Odyssey, either an Odyssey or a bit, or maybe both. You know, and maybe even another channel, even maybe a third camp channel. You know, just to make sure that this word can continue to go out. You know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But we were out there last week. You know, I just want to make sure that, you know, you Akiyam and Akwathium, you know, in the brotherhood are aware that we were out there. You know, there's no days off, you know, <laughs> unless the weather is just, you know, um, uh, you know, impossible. You know, because up here in the Northeast, it gets ugly. But needless to say, I just want to put that out there, you know, so you Akiyam and Akwathium know that, you know, we were out there, you know, getting it in through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But uh, yeah, let's get right into Deuteronomy, um, the twenty-third chapter, in the seventh verse, which is plain, you know, it really isn't that uh, that complicated to understand, you know. But you know, to the pure, all things are pure, you know, as the scriptures say. But this is the book of Deuteronomy, and this is going to take, you know, looking up words, right? Look, going into some um, history, you know, going into the Torah, um, you know, pulling up maps. You know, this is what it's going to take, you know, in order to understand specific scriptures, you know, like our elders and apostles of the Great Millstone have taught us. You know, this is how you get the true understanding of the scriptures. You know, this is not, I just want to put it out there. This is not an open and shut book, you know? Like these wacky tacky Christians think it is. Like they'll read this, they'll read this scripture verbatim and they'll think they have it all figured out. No. 
<laughs> You're not even close. But anyways, let's get into it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 7, and it reads, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land. Now that word abhor uh, goes into avoid. Okay? Now, when you get this word um, Edomite, Right? Strong's H-130. Edomi. Edomi. Right. And the form Black. just below that. Edom. Edom. Right, so Edomi or Edome. Right? When you go into the Strong's info, uh, you got, uh, it says, uh, Edom, Edom, yeah? Right? Edom, Edomi. Right? Edawamia, right? This should say Edawamia is what it should say. See? Now, what it's, what it's telling you to do is telling you to see H7, H726. You see? And there's, a, there's an important reason why. Okay? Because what you're going to find out is that this is a clerical error. Okay? For H130. You see? And when you go into when you go into the proper understanding, right? Let's get this. Strong's H726. Aromim. Aromim. Right. And the form just below that. Adomi. Adomi. Right? Or oh, Adamia, right? Now it goes into Syrian. You see? And there's a valid reason why. Okay, and this is not talking about the heathens. Okay, this is specific, specifically talking about the descendants of Abraham. Okay? And this can be this can be very easily understood. Okay, when you go into the scriptures and pull up some maps. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump. Actually, let me leave this up. And let me go to. So, okay, let's go here. Let's go to Genesis, the 11th chapter, real quick. You know, just to bring this together, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. So, Genesis 11, and uh, let's see here. We can start at verse, we can start at verse 27. <laughs> the book of Genesis, chapter 11, and verse 27, and it reads... Now, these are the generations of Terah, okay, which is Abraham's dad, right? Terah begot Abram, right? Nahor and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father, right? Terah, in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram, right? Nahor, Salakia, and Abram and Nahor took them wives. Now, Nahor is Abram's brother. I just want to make that clear. Right. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren. She had no children. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur, right? Ur of the Chaldees, right? To go into the land of Canaan, okay? Which is Jerusalem, the, 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 the Holy Land, right? And they came into Haran, now this is very important, and dwelt there, you see? Now, when you go into the biblical maps, right? Now, when you go into Haran, where is that at? It's in Syria. You see? They they traveled from Ur, right, of the Chaldees, to Haran, right? And they dwelt there for some time. <laughs> you see? And before uh, Abraham was given the charge to leave, to go to Canaan, right, which is Jerusalem, they were living here. 
You see? And again, let's go back to the scriptures. Right? We could prove it through the scriptures. Now, when we jump to the next chapter, right, we can start from the top. Yeah, let's just start from the top and read down. Right? Now, the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that cursed thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. You see? So he departed out of Haran, but guess what? He still had descendants that were there. <laughs> you see? His brother never left. You see? No, um, uh, Nahor. Nahor was still there. You see? So when you go, and, that, and it's clearly telling you it's a clerical error. You see? And it's telling you it's going into what? Syrian. But the proper understanding is that it's, the, it's speaking of the descendants of Abraham. You see? <laughs> it's not talking about the Edomites. Okay, because when you when you go into the Zondervan uh, Bible dictionary, under Edomite, it clearly states, okay, that Edom was the only neighbor of the Israelites that was not promised any mercy. You see? Matter of fact, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai told us to remember. Matter of fact, let's go back. Let's go to um. Yeah, let's bring this point home now. There's no way it could be talking about uh, evil E, and it's clearly telling you Es Esau's uh, Bible historians even know that that's a clerical error. It's right there in the blue letter. You know what I mean? So you wacky tacky Christians, I can't get that. What the hell is wrong with you? The book of uh, uh where do I want to go? Uh, remember Amalek, man. What's that? Deuteronomy. Yahweh about Hashem Yahweh Shai told us to remember this damn devil. Okay? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, and verse 17, it reads, Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee. Even all that were feeble behind thee. So this coward, okay, was killing on young and old. You see? But he thinks Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai forgot about that. No, that's just another vanilla folder that's being held in the file cabinet. Okay? That's just collecting dust, but it's about to come out. Okay? You're going to be caught on all charges. See? Everything you've done, these devils, right? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, since the time of Cain, you are going to be called out for. <laughs> you see? You are not going to go unpunished. Let's continue on. When thou was faint and weary, and he feared not, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. You see? These devils don't fear Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay, and why I'm bringing this out? Uh, is because Amalek is the chief house of evil E. You see? When you go to Genesis, and they're the ones in power right now, those small hats. Okay? Now, when you go to Genesis, the 36th chapter, right? And you read the ninth verse, it says what? And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, and Mount Seir. Okay? Here it is, this great judgment coming for the chief house as we're going to continue to read, right? In Deuteronomy, um, the 25th chapter, right? We're going to go back there. So how the hell can, uh, <laughs> and not to mention Edomite alone, the Edomites alone, the book of Ho Obadiah is dedicated to evil E. Lord willing, we're going to get that too to bring the point home. How it's impossible that that can be speaking of an Edomite in reference to uh, Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter. Right, let's get this right. So when you jump down 
to the 12th verse, it says what? Do the, the Genesis uh, 36 and 12, and it reads, And Timnah, right, was concubine to Eliphaz. Now, Eliphaz is the oldest, now, Eliphaz is the oldest son of Esau. See? That's his, that's his first son. Right? Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. Okay? These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. Now, why is this important? Because Amalek is the chief house, okay, of the Edomites. Okay? That's why scripture says Amalek was the first of the nations. Okay, let's get that real quick before we go back to, uh, let's see, let me see, before we go back to Deuteronomy. Um, what's that? Numbers... The book of Numbers, chapter 24, in verse. Now, this is now this is when um, Bal, uh, Balaam uh, was actually he prophesied um, <laughs> of the Hamashiach. Right. And he also prophesied of the destruction of Amalek. All right. Evil E. You see, in general. Now, check this out, right? The book of Numbers, chapter 24. And I'll start at verse 19. It reads, Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. Who's that? Yahweh Shai. And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And who's prophesied to be in power pursuing a second Ezra, the sixth chapter? Esau. Is the end of the world. See? And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Evil E is going to be on the scene. Okay? When the Hamashiach arrives. That's why it says, And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Right? And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. You see? And now that, that would bring us right into Obadiah. But before we get that, let's go back to Deuteronomy, the 25th chapter. See? This is why precept must be on, upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Right back in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25. And I'm going to read verse 18 again and continue on. How he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You see? And scripture says, um, uh, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proving that this man has no wisdom because he doesn't fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that, and that also um, uh, qualifies him for a first class ticket to be visited with evil. All right, pursuing the Proverbs. I want to say Proverbs, the 29th chapter. <laughs> you see? He's going to be visited with evil. You see, continuing on now. Now here's 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 back. This is backing up what ba Balaam had said. Okay, therefore it shall be when the Lord thy power have given thee rest from all thine enemies round about, in the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, Jerusalem. Right, that thou shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shall not. Forget it. Okay? And it, this goes right into Obadiah. Now remember, Amalek is the chief house. You see? It's the head. You take out the head of a serpent, it's over with. It's game over. You see? You go into the book of Job, the Lord speaks on how he's going to root up uh, our son and nephew, man, of these damn devils, man. You see, it's impossible for um, uh, Deuteronomy, um, the, 20, the 23rd chapter, 
to be for, to be uh, Deuteronomy twenty three and seven to be referring to these damn devils, man. It's impossible. You see, let's go to Obadiah and make the point. I'm just backing up the point that it's impossible. You know, there's nowhere in the Bible where it speaks of giving favor to Esau, e, uh, uh, <laughs> Esau, Edom, or any of his, uh, uh, any of his uh, descendants, man. Right? Obadiah, I, I must be allowed to start at verse 15. Verse 18 is the point, right? The book of Obadiah, the only, uh, you know, chapter 1 and verse 15, the only chapter, right? For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. Why? Because all the heathen had their hands on the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the children of Israel, okay? The chosen people of the promise, okay, of the covenant. The chosen people of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. All these nations had, them, had, it, had their hands on us, man. Therefore, they all must pay, pursuing the, <laughs> pursuing to the scriptures, man. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. What's that mean? Recompense. Payback. Okay? Thus says Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, right? So shall all the heathen drink continually. All the heathen. Yeah. They shall drink. And they shall swallow down. And they shall be as though they had not been. It's going to be as if you were never over us. That's how low you're going to be brought. It's going to be a thousand years of a long, drawn out, rigorous captivity. Thus says the Bible. What do you think those rods of iron, those rods of iron are for, man? To tickle you? When you look up that, when you look up rod of iron... Right in the blue letter, it goes into most rigorous rule. You see? Hey, nobody gets away. We didn't get away. His chosen didn't get away. No, the words of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai flared up against us in these latter days, and we paid the price. But guess what? You heathen, starting with Esau, Edom, the so called white man, you're going to pay the ultimate price, man. You're going to pay the ultimate price. Thus says the scriptures. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Where are all the other nations at? This word Zion goes into Tezayuan in the Paleo-Hebrew, which means monument or memorial. Another way of saying Jerusalem. Where are the other nations at? I thought everybody can be saved. Hmm. Interesting, right? But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness, right? Separation. That word holy goes into separate. And the house of Jacob, right? So-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, right? Shall possess their possessions, including them. You see? You're going to become possessions. He that leadeth, leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Okay? This is written. And, the, and here's the point. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame. See that? Northern and southern kingdom, all 12 tribes are going to fall upon you. Right? And the house of Esau, eh? the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. See? There shall be not be any remaining, it says, of the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken it. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh I signed off on it. You see, so there's no way around that. There's no way around this judgment. And there's no way, okay, in hell that Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter, 
in the seventh verse, is talking about an Edomite. It's not possible. And we just proved it. You know, through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Nowhere in the scriptures are you going to see where Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai favors these devils. Matter of fact, pursuant to uh, Malachi, the first chapter, and Romans, the ninth chapter, where it's reiterated, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai hates Esau, man. Matter of fact, let's close out there. The book of Romans, chapter 9. I'm going to go straight to the point and blow it up as well. In verse 13, it reads, As it is written, right? Because it's written where? In Malachi, the first chapter. Jacob have I loved. Right? A so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And speckled birds. Remember, Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 64, part of the curses was us being scattered. You see, so there are going to be Israelites that look like the heathen nations. But their spirit is going to bear witness with the spirit that they are a child of Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. They're going to gravitate. They're going to hold on and understand this word. Okay? They're going to hold on tight to this word. They're going to be firm, faithful believers because they're truly Israelites. You see, they're going to be full of faith and works. Right? But Esau, the so-called white man, have I hated. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rakak Wedash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwathiam will edify. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. Kal halalim la Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rakak Wadash. Shalom.